Okay, Hurt and Merton here again. Um, anyways, I just got my two polymer lowers in uh, this week, and I figured I'd do a little video on the two different ones here I got. Uh, kind of a, uh, a comparison. Anyways, we got one from Polymer 80, and the other one from James Madison Tactical. Um, I've seen some videos on these on YouTube, and you know, the box does look good. I mean, according to the reviews, I mean, they put a lot of effort into the box. Um, you know, there's a detailed description on what comes in the box on the back. Uh, there's Palmer 80's logo, it's obviously made in the USA. And, I mean, aesthetically, I mean, it's very pleasing to the eye. It looks very good. Um, and then we have the James Madison Tactical here, which is just in, what the heck? <laughs> regular box uh, so I mean it doesn't bother me either way I think you know it doesn't matter I mean when you're not using the boxes anyway um, you're throwing them out <laughs> so I mean with the polymer 80 yeah I mean yeah they took some time to uh, put some effort into the uh, the uh, box and how it looks but uh, anyway uh, inside it comes with everything which is really cool um, it comes with the drill bits and everything in the mill and everything to mill it out um, the jig and everything on here these I got these little uh, anti-walk trigger hammer ring pins and I'm gonna try these out in these polymers um, you know just to keep the uh, the pins from from rotating and wearing wearing the plastic out so we're gonna I'm gonna check those out I'll probably do a video on how to install those I mean they're pretty self-explanatory <laughs> but uh, anyways I'm gonna try those out um, Here's the polymer 80 lower. Let me take it out here so we can see it. I mean, everybody knows about the jig. It comes with a jig. Don't need to do any repetitive uh, analysis on that. Anyways, um, and here's the lower. I'll put this down here for now. Um, and here is... If I can get this to camera to focus here. Oh, I can't. The light's not good. Anyways, here's a... Um, the screw and the nut for the pistol grip, there we go, uh, and since Polymer 80 doesn't thread their uh, lowers for the uh, pistol grip, they have the space here where you put that square nut into and then you just screw the screw into it. So that's how that works, and then it obviously comes with the screws for the, um, the jig to be squeezed together. And we'll come over here and the James Madison Tactical, regular, regular box here, and we open it up, and James Madison Tactical, let's put these boxes aside here so we can better view. So we got that. The jig is, I mean, it's, it's pretty solid. Um, it's got, I mean, they made some changes here. You only drill from the right side of the jig all the way through. They don't have the holes in that side. So... Um, but the the jig is pretty solid. It comes in three pieces, um, so it's pretty solid. Uh, put those aside. Uh, now, I mean, you can see both of them side by side, um, and of the obvious difference, as you can see, the magwell here, uh, the James Madison has a little bit more ribbing. It seems just a little bit stronger, you know, just looking at it. So. Um, you know, various differences here, um, you know, the lower trigger guard is obviously different, but you know, different manufacturers, different things. Um, I did notice that when I did pick these both up, that the James Madison tactical seemed a little bit heavier, it just seems more stout and beefy. Uh, when you turn them over, uh, one thing I did notice that's kind of, I'm going to have to test it out, but I think with the, um, magwell release button here area it just if you can see i mean it's kind of in a cavity so i think maybe with gloves or it might be hard to kind of depress that button um and over here i mean this one's you know there it's easy easily accessible so we'll see on that There's a couple of differences there i know the the polymer 80 doesn't come with any logos which is kind of cool you know um the jam uh, james madison tactical has their logo right there uh fire safe all that so and then with theirs, you can see right there, they have a brass 
insert sort of that's kind of part of the injection molding so it's in there to uh, mount your uh, pistol hand grip so anyways I just I noticed that you know the bottom here if you look at it I mean you know this one here looks a little bit weaker in this area versus here I mean it's a very big thick ridge so in here actually I don't know if you could see it but I could actually bend it let me see if I can get it do it here um, move that aside here you can see that I can I can kind of bend the lower magwell on that. This one here I can't. It's very rigid, very solid. And if you kind of look at these here, you can notice. I mean, it seems hard in the video, but you see. I mean, the trigger well area down here seems wider, wider here between my two fingers versus the polymer eighty, the James Madison being on the left and the polymer eighty on the right here. It just seems beefier. So, um, I noticed the other thing also, um, a negative with the Polymer 80 is, is that right out of the box, um, the mags didn't really want to fit in here. It was a tight fit, too fit, too tight for it, for you to push the button to eject the, um, the mag. They wouldn't come out. I had to pull them out. On the James Madison Tactical, the only problem I had, only mag I had a problem with was the 30 round mag uh, p mag that was it the 10 round p mag worked great the uh, 10 uh, military standard issue ones work great so i don't really need to file that down on this one they say file but you know it's pretty thin in here and i don't know if that's going to be able to work or not i mean i could probably file it down just a couple thousandths but we'll get to that once i mill it and everything um and then on the back side here for the rear uh detent spring what I did here is I threaded these because they're threaded on the cast aluminum ones and I went out and bought a bunch of set screws so I could put them in there so the spring doesn't pop out when I change the buttstock. So that's one thing I did do to them already um, and they seem to work well. And the other issue I had with both of them is in here I'm going to have to file down uh, for the uh, mag release um, kit part uh, kit here because it's too tight you actually have to I have to you have to push it in on both of them it doesn't fall out it doesn't come out you push it in you flip it over it doesn't fall out so it's a lot of a lot of resistance in there so I'm going to file those down so that was a negative on both um, you know as far as looking good I like the James Madison tactical it looks a little bit beefier looks a little it looks more rigid and more durable um, they're both the Gen 2's for both companies James this is the James Madison tactical Gen 2 this is the Phoenix Gen 2 so we'll see. I know the magwell in the first generation was pretty flimsy. People were bending them and kind of complaining about that. So we'll see what happens um, if I when I file it down, if it weakens it or not. So, anyways, I do like um, if you look at them both here. I do like uh, I do like the polymer eighty uh, rear buffer the th where the rear buffer uh, uh, threads in. I like the thickness. It's like a quarter of an inch. It's, it's beefy, stout. So I don't see any problem there with um, with that being kind of a stress point for these lowers. Um, I did notice though, I don't know if you could see it. It's going to be kind of hard. But anyways, the threads on the JMT were a little bit more pronounced and a little bit better than the Polymer 80. So I'm going to mill them both out. I'll do another video on that and we'll see um, you know, when it comes to fit and finish the lower parts kit, how well it's easy to put together and what more I have to do to make them work. Um, but I mean, as far as now, I mean, I'm, I, I like them both. I'm leaning a little bit more towards the, uh, James Madison tactical. Uh, I, it just, it looks really good. Uh, it feels good. It looks rigid. And, um, and yeah, that's that. We'll just you see. I think the Polymer 80 comes with the whole kit, so it's gonna be a little bit more user friendly. The James Madison Tactical, I have to go out and get the the drill bits and the mill bits and all that stuff separate. So, you know, I mean, for the price of this, the James Madison Tactical is a little bit more expensive. So, you know, hey, they didn't they didn't make the box look pretty. You know, then again, it's just a regular box. But I'm not worried about that. I know some people like. Their stuff coming in a good looking box, but hey, you know what? I'd rather have a more more quality put into the part than what it's shipped in. For me, that's my preference. So, I mean, the box looks good, you know, gives you that good, nice, warm feeling. But hey, I'm all about what's inside because that's what I'm gonna be using and uh, sending rounds down range and having a good time. So, anyways, I uh, hope you guys like this video. Um, you know, share it, comment on it. Uh, I'll be ha uh, having some other videos coming up on them. I uh, 
on my process on building these and then we'll go from there. I plan on getting a couple other polymer lowers and just and seeing which ones I really like the best and 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 hopefully it's going to be some useful information for people out there that are interested in this. I mean they're they're very easy. They're very good to do and of course the one plus is that you don't have to register it and you know the ATF doesn't need to know about it and you know and that's one great thing about this country is, is that you know we do have the right to bear arms and the second amendment is there to to protect us from a tyranny from our own government and you know and this is what it's all about you know our forefathers this this is what they foresaw you know 200 years later so you know i'm all about making these um and having a good time and having fun with them and if uh shit does hit the fan down the road in a sense hey you got a lot of stuff that the atf and the government doesn't know about and if they want to come confiscate them you know they don't have this big list this registry to go around and take it take the guns away from all these people. So I actually only have two that are actually registered. I have a bunch of others that I've made and, um, it's just a nice feeling to have that. So anyways, like I said, uh, like the video if you do and, um, comment on it. Let me know what you think and just give me my insight on it. All right. You guys have a nice day.